Welcome, viewers. You are here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you have felt it your entire life. You know indubitably that the future is upon us. I talk, of course, about virtual reality. Sorry, my glasses are about to go. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> There's an outtake. Welcome everyone to the Board Gamers E3 special and I'm happy to announce before we even get started that Nintendo did in fact win this year's E3. They had some fantastic games on hey, show. Hey Jim, I think you'll find that Sony won E3, didn't they? Uh, so damn pal, Xbox. Hey, Xbox? No, 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 you guys are way off. It's all about the VR. It's the future, man, the future! What are you talking about? What are you we talking about? We're well, well, in Come on, no, no, I'm sorry. Did, did you come on the same game? It's not the same game. 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 Yeah, yeah. The Sony press conference was, is that? I almost forgot about Uncharted 4. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all remember E3s of yesteryear. Awkward Connect yeah. demos. Yes, you are. Look at him. Look at him dance around, prancing about like a little girl. I said enough, Shire! Big round of applause to everyone at E3. But we've managed to get through this without one mention of the Connect. Oh. Our new dog I feel it in my fingers. Every I feel it in my move out of toes. The way when you get close to the Nervous developers wheeled out to explain themselves, but now it's time for Xbox 2015. Time to wipe away your Doritos dust, nerds. It's time for Halo. Also filling in the Spartan ranks now is Nathan Fillion, straight from Firefly. At the show, we got our first sightings of some of the main characters, new abilities, as well as showcasing a pretty rad space ninja. In Halo, we'll be having shooty gun time with enemies that can't really fight back. Your passage is denied. Oh, there's some people. Moving on, Racing Fangs got their first glimpse of Forza 6, which will be speeding into your games library later this year. A few new announcements were made as part of the ID at Xbox program, featuring the spellbinding Cuphead. The distinctive art style of this 1930s animation, wonderful characters will surely make this game one to look out for. Get ready to hit the wasteland in Fallout 4, which was announced to have mod support for Xbox One. Games. Games never change. Welcome home. We also caught a quick glimpse at the Rise of the Tomb Raider, a timed exclusive for Xbox One, in which we saw Lara Croft fighting against the elements in Siberia. What do you think? We're close to something, Jonah. What we can see from the new Lara Croft is that it's going back to basics. A game I'm excited about is a new up-and-coming rare game, Sea of Thieves, in which you and your mates can go travelling the seven seas looking for boots. Yar! Do you want to be walking around your living room looking like you're touching invisible strippers? Well, good news, HoloLens is here to stay. HoloLens' appeal is that you can turn any working surface into a playable area, so you can commit random acts of terrorism on Minecraft, for example. Step back. HoloLens, coming to a lonely virgin near you. Ending the show was Gears of War 4, in which you'll be happy to know the chainsaw gun is back in action.
Where's Marcus? Where did... What's happening here? Wait, I thought they got rid of the Locust in Gears of War 3. Time for me to get out of here before Shy hunts me down. So there you go, that was Brad's roundup of Shia LaBeouf. Uh, sorry, uh, Xbox, Xbox. Uh, I think you're in love with Shia LaBeouf. A bit Shia there, LaBeouf heavy there. Is it yeah. just, well, it's what the kids are into nowadays. <laughs> They're all LaBeoufing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the new phrase, but it's, 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 okay. it's okay. You know, yeah. in fairness, they don't want to, but it's the peer pressure. They go, shall I do it, shall I do it? And then someone's going, just do it! Just do it! And well, then no they... one actually believes those people on stage are actually playing the game. So I have to bring in Shia just to, like, motivate them to, like... <laughs> Act more. Everything you saw oh, come was on. genuinely true. It was real laboofing. Come on, it's, it's, not, it's not scripted at all. So all that stuff. You know, yeah, let's play, man. Yeah. Oh my God, you walked over there. Heal me oh, up, Daddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the X X Xbox. How how do you think it goes? Uh, do you think they won over over Sony? I'll be honest. I'm not entirely sure they won the whole E3. But as its own. Can you say that? Well, you're an Xbox man here. here. Calm down, Jim. Okay. Hear me out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I too much coffee. Okay. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't do, well, yeah. Well, wait, this is why wait. we separate these two, because they really disagree on this stuff. Well, basically, if you've looked at party threes from Xbox, it would, what I presented, first of all, was like, oh, we've got people playing Connect and sort of waving their arms around, like, no tomorrow. But this A3, they just showed the games. There's yes. no There's no, games, there was no get a weird little girl to come on and pretend to stroke an imaginary tiger. Yeah. So it was Which all, is a weird metaphor. All games. Quite frankly. So it was the best Xbox E3 in years. So what would you say the highlight is? What was the winning part of the presentation for you? The winning part for me was the HoloLens demonstration. <laughs> See, I told you, it's all about the VR. Wait, oh, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, like wait, 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 wait for one goddamn minute. <laughs> the, the crowd went crazy for the moment. They did. They the, didn't go the, insane. The, when when the when the thing came out, they just went mental. They I think that, that the application for HoloLens is what's going to win Xbox overall in the coming years. Coming back to the games on show, I mean, obviously we made a few notes here. Um, what was your highlights of the actual games? We talked about games, 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 games. Brad, what were the games that stood out for you? Exclusives. Yeah. Halo, of course. Halo. 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 It's all about Halo. Halo. Not just Halo. one Master Chief. We've got like five now. <laughs> yeah. A gaggle of Master Chiefs. You can't, you can't get any better than I, I think. I think it's very important on this show that you actually come with like a collective name for Master Chiefs. A gaggle. A gaggle of a Master gaggle Chiefs. Chiefs. <laughs> a gaggle of Chiefs. <laughs> Chafes. They kind of chafe. <laughs> you know. I'm sure most city centres um, on, on a particular sort of rough Friday night have a gaggle of chiefs somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the one wearing a leather jacket, mate. It's, that's all I can say. That's true. Yes, yeah, because I'm quite clearly, it is obvious, I am Lawrence Fishburne. I thought you came from West Side Story. <laughs> you do look a bit like there's something not quite right about your Lawrence Fishburne. No, no, it, I, I assure you the look that's is... That's it. You've got more hair. Ooh. That's it. That is the only yeah. actual difference between yeah. myself and Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Uh, Despite what people me, might sure. think, I've it's just a minor that. difference, but the rest is absolutely spot on. <laughs> so coming back to Xbox <laughs> for a minute, um, again, of course, another couple of big hardware things, weren't there, um, to do with Xbox. They kicked off with one particularly big one, of those who like going back into the past to play old games. What was that one about? Backwards compatibility, finally. Boom! Finally. Hooray! But then it begs the question, why wasn't it there in the first place? It was That's just true. an update. I've sold all my Xbox 360 games. Exactly. Now, so I've got like, uh. like five left. So it's like, yay! Oh, thanks. Why didn't you say that But from what ago? I've read, is that they're putting all the games on there. It's just up to, to the developers to whether to allow it to actually work. So Wait, they're now we're going to or not. So maybe these Surely companies are making HD remakes and don't want it to go on there. That is a very good And point. at the end of the day, isn't it all about the jingle jang, if you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> what? So Sorry? Street. <laughs> Seriously. Is, it, is that some sort of strange <laughs> euphemism? Yeah. Yeah. No. What? That's a... What are you tickling? Bradsonism. A Bradsonism. <laughs> I, I think it's referring to, to money of some kind. Yeah, I mean, yeah money. Sure and it's all about money. compatibility. Compatibility thing for me was one of the best things of the whole of E3. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, it's Microsoft going to the Microsoft fans and just giving them what they want. It's, yeah. it's like you said, you know, PlayStation will charge you for PS1 classics, PS2 classics. Yeah. What's it? Um, the, I should know. PlayStation Now, the streaming service. Well, this is it. It's not available here yet because they're charging you for everything. It's pretty expensive. Compatible yeah. games. Yeah. So yeah. Xbox are just like have it all for free. If you already so own it, you put it think, in. You know. Do you think this is going to tip the balance? So, for example, I have a, a 360 at home, and yeah. uh, I haven't got into the next generation as of yet. But um, if I was um, up until E3, I was on level playing fields. I could have gone either way because nothing was backwards compatible. But sure. now with this, suddenly I've got yeah. all my 360 games which would actually work. So for you me, that would tip the balance. It'd be, well, we'll I have to go for the Xbox One. So yeah. do you think this is going to tip the balance of people who are on the undecided bench and stuff? Well, that's what they're betting on, aren't they? 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I reckon so. Yeah. Yeah. Let's definitely, reckon let's definitely get all the people that haven't gone from Xbox 360 to Xbox One yet to make yeah. the change, I think. I think those people are going to go, right, now I'm going to buy an Xbox One. Yeah. You know you're doing well when your rival's making your arguments for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're rapidly running out of time. So wrapping up, Microsoft. Um, Brad, it's up to you. You're, you're our Xbox guy. Yep. What rating do you give the Microsoft E3 conference? I rate the Xbox conference four and a half on Matrix out of five. Four and a half. Yeah. I thought we were going to end up with Francis going, it was good. It was a good conference. It was all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Four and a half out of five, that is almost a perfect score, so that's a pretty good start, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's not bad. It's not an official board gamers um, reviewing uh, sort of well, you know, format. Well, you know, we'll go with it It's not a recognised format, but we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. Four and a half, crying Don Matrix. <laughs> for, uh, for the win there. Poor so. Don Matrick. So we'll see what Sony brings to the table after the break. Coming up! Physics of that is just not quite correct. So I'm <laughs> this I is have Jim. to make a phone call. Excuse me, Sony. I am not. <laughs> After Microsoft's strong press conference earlier in the day, you'd think Sony would want to start their show with a bang. Not SCEA President Sean Layden talking about feelings and emotions. But it turns out he was talking about Last Guardian, the Team Eco adventure game which hasn't been seen by the masses since E3 2009, follows the growing friendship between a young boy and a giant cat, bird, dog thing. For the first time ever, we saw gameplay. Fumita Ueda says the game is now fully optimised on PS4 and will be releasing in 2016. Next, Shue came on stage and he did look rather happy. I could not be happier. Stand and it would soon become apparent why. Not just The Last Guardian, but over the next half hour, Sony had surprised us with plenty of exclusive PS4 titles. Gorilla's new IP Horizon looked fantastic. It featured a woman protagonist with a bow and arrow fighting mechanical dinosaurs in a post-apocalyptic world. Horizon will be the first non-Kill Zone game Gorilla has released in over a decade. After we all stopped marvelling at robot dinosaurs, Hello Games dropped by to show us their hugely ambitious project No Man's Sky, a space exploration indie game of seemingly endless universes. They showed us extensive gameplay, and it's got to be said, the game really does seem In the distance endless. is the centre of the galaxy. That's where we're all trying to get to. Alex Evans of Media Molecule came on stage to show off their new PS4 exclusive dreams. Gotta say though, all he really did was mould weird shapes out of people's faces with the PS4's motion controls. He did also play some cool music. And just as it's all getting a bit too cool in indie, Sony send out Adam Boys to talk about some exclusive DLC that nobody cares about. Eventually though, he did start talking about Final Fantasy and first he spilled the beans on what is the newest addition to the franchise, World of Final Fantasy. A crossplay title coming exclusively to the PS4 and the PS Vita in 2016. But fans knew something exciting was about to happen when Adam Boys introduced the next trailer simply as a special treat. That's right people, Final Fantasy VII HD, it's happening and it's a timed exclusive for PS4. Unfortunately we didn't get many details like when the game is coming out or who is making it. But nonetheless, a super exciting announcement for PlayStation and Final Fantasy fans alike. A little bit of excitement. And as if that wasn't enough of a surprise, Yu Suzuki then came out and announced Shenmue 3. He also started a Kickstarter campaign on stage to crowdfund the project. Over the next hour and a half, it raised over 1 million US dollars, earning the Guinness World Record for the fastest game to reach the 1 million mark. So, what about Project Morpheus? Well, less than two minutes and 20 seconds later, and Andrew House, CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment, has told you absolutely everything you'll ever need to know about Project Morpheus. Morpheus was designed for PS4. House then started to waffle on about PlayStation View, Sony's PS4-based TV app. And here's some more exclusive DLC no one cares about. So, back to actual games then, and exclusive new gameplay footage of Battlefront, DICE's new Star Wars themed multiplayer shoot 'em up, was the perfect way to get everyone excited again. And as is almost tradition in recent years, the Sony conference ended with Naughty Dog's latest project. The demo did actually crash to begin with, with Drake appearing frozen for around 30 seconds. But once it was underway, seeing Uncharted 4 gameplay footage was fantastic. I have to say though, I was much more impressed by the gameplay demo they showed off last December at PlayStation Experience. But it was great to see nonetheless. So, PlayStation's E3 conference draws to a close. A strong showing from Sony, but PS4 still has very few games on it and we aren't getting any more in 2015, despite the fact that they showed so many new games here today.
Okay, so that's a quick look at Sony's press conference at this year's E3. So, uh, Adam, you, you sounded quite impressed by the Microsoft stuff, so what have you got to say about what we've just seen? Well, it's the better press, press conference, clearly. Ooh, that'd be more Ooh. wine talk. That'd be more guys. Ooh, back, back. back. Hold them back. Hold them back. Hold them back. It's not worth it, dog. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. In terms it. of games, Wait for it's the definitely fact. more spoken about, I think, in terms of games. Feature, it's, you know, Microsoft is all featured. Can I jump the gun and can I talk about the one that I know that a lot of my friends have got very excited about and has generally got me a little bit moist, which was Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> Star Wars well, Star Wars, Star Wars oh, amazing Battlefront that isn't look. actually an exclusive. No, I know. Sony game, they just showed it at the... But because they, because they showed That's it. How definitely no, but this is, the point, this is what Greg's <laughs> touching upon, actually, isn't it? Is that the, the slightly awkward truth for Sony at this conference is the fact that most of what their output is, what they're saying is PS4 is the best place best place to play third party games. Mm. So they're showing off things like Batman, they're showing off Battlefront, they're saying, we haven't got that many exclusives, we can't just sort of keep saying, exclusive, exclusive. They just kind of had to go over sure. that a bit, didn't they? And they just had and to they say, spent well, about... we're the best place to play third party, so that okay. was Do you think enough. there were any, any exclusives that were heavyweight contenders that could take on the halos and the things of, of, the, of the Horizon was my game of the show. Really? Um, yeah, Horizon, that, I did like look at Horizon. That was, that was the dinosaur difficult. hunting with, with a bow and arrow, yeah. wasn't it? See, Jim's yeah. got an issue with this. He's like, no, no, that would not happen. No, that is, no it's fine. Sorry, it's God. fine. Explain the problem science. is the dinosaurs were metal. Uh, when, when, when that so how do you all, take out a metal dinosaur with right, bow and right, arrows? And you clearly have woman just arrow, kicking yeah. ass, you know, destroying all these robot dinosaurs with a bow and arrow. Jim was the only person sitting there going, what? You can't, you can't I'm sorry, that. but the physics, like, yes! the physics of that is just not quite correct, I'm afraid. <laughs> this I is have Jim. to make a phone call. Excuse me, Sony, I am not that pleased by the showing of this game. I'd like to refer you to your local scientist to clear up some of the inaccuracies. This is Jim, that's not deterred by the fact that there was, a, there, there was a dinosaur in there at all, and a metal dinosaur in that. What's that wrong with that? has to pick on the, uh, the projectile and the, uh, the damage of the... Uh, of course, I'm that's sorry, what just happened. It would have pierced the metal hide. Coming back to the exclusive this part, um, of course we did have, um, as you touched upon in that video, a big announcement of a remake of a fan favourite, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy VII. VII. You know what, I never, I've never played the Final Fantasy games, but I've always heard about them, and everyone always goes on about Final Fantasy VII mm. as the greatest version of it the game. It was really so. you know, a huge announcement, you saw the reaction from the crowd. Yeah. Oh, the, the geeks went show. crazy. Oh yeah. They went mental. The, uh, the thing about that game is, they, they just showed a trailer, they showed a really nice trailer, it looked like a movie. Yeah. It look like Final Fantasy. Well, Final Fantasy always has those cutscenes, cool. doesn't you could, it? You could recognise like the, the playground from the original game. And, and yeah. yeah there's a giant few... sword that she has on her back. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty iconic. That yeah. Yeah. shot from them. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it, again, not it, much detail. Not no, no gameplay shown, but the obviously with that a big game name. That, yeah. You, yeah. You, they, they probably haven't even started. Making it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're, you you've admitted in the last segment that that Xbox are winning overall, but you, you still Fair argue <laughs> that the, the Sony got this conference and mm. it was the best. Definitely. Why? Because they had more games. More games? Mm. Is more better than, is it quantity over quality? They, they had more games of better quality. Ooh. Ooh. They, Ooh. they did though, Ooh. didn't they? Ooh. Okay. Well, what about, what about another um, blast from the past, mm. a game that gamers have, have wanted for such a long time, Shenmue 3. Yeah, that the would... great the Shenmue series that was originally on Dreamcast, I think, wasn't it? And of course, there was a massive cliffhanger at the end of Shenmue, Shen, Shenmue? Shenmue, Shenmue 2. <laughs> Very hard to say. Bring your back in. Yes, I'm Shenmue. Shenmue. Shenmue 2. <laughs> I never, I, I, so, so I, did I, you I, like Shenmue 2? <laughs> I never actually played it. Yeah, Shenmue 2. <laughs> um, I never had a Dreamcast at the time. I played Shenmue 1, and that's awesome. It's the perfect, yeah, for those who don't know, game. massive sort of open world game. Pretty much you can interact with anything. Like, you can spend hours just, like, moving things around a construction yeah, site. Yeah, I, I like seem that. to remember, a, yeah, <laughs> there, there was a bit in Shenmue 1 where you spent, like, a whole day, an, a, yeah. an actual whole day, I don't mean an in-game day, just yeah. moving crates yeah. with a forklift. So, so it makes... Yeah, um, you actually got to get a job and things like that. It is quite... Makes things like Heavy Rain just look like child's play. Quite so, exactly. I, I'm it's sorry. It's one of those really quirky uh, Japanese games. Yeah. It's right at home place. I've never yeah. been into these games, but what makes me laugh is there's, there are people out there, and, and this is no no way as sort of a, a, an archetypal every single gamer but there are people out there who would rather stay at home than game than go out into the real world and get a job and uh, they would play a game <laughs> so where rather than go and get a real job and earn real money would stay at home in game and play a game in real time where you then have to get a job yeah. It's ironic wow. that, isn't Sounds it? Like, <laughs> it's it's Do you just don't get it. It's different. You're the only yeah. one here that thinks that's unusual. Makes sense to me. <laughs> wow. wow. Am I the only sane one? I clearly am. <laughs> so we couldn't possibly go beyond Sony without mentioning the massive reveal, Adam. 
The Last Guardian. <laughs> it's here. It's finally here. It exists. Well, it's a real game. You say well, it's here, but you know, it could still be another. It could just be another prick piece. <laughs> they did say 2016, but it looked really good. But I think the reason it's been, you know, so long is because they've been optimizing it for the PS4. Before it was running on the PS3, I think it didn't work properly. Yeah. The game looked great, and, you know, the scene gameplay was awesome. But yeah. it didn't look that much different, really. I mean, I, I was expecting no. a kind of a new game almost. It almost looked before, like and it was still just that weird it like a translation of what they cap thing. <laughs> yeah. And a, and a boy just sort of traversing difficult bits of terrain. You just want to say weird, what's the point? To be I mean, you're in this ruined world. Why don't you find somewhere safe? Mm. Why are you jumping around in all these ruins? Yeah. You know? I mean what's so, so make special? a pretty boring game. Just you hanging out with a dog. I'm just creature. thinking of his welfare. He's a young child. And he's he needs a, a big dog. Home. He needs meals. Exactly. So three square out meals with a, a day. Yeah, as you quickly mentioned there, that we shouldn't have forgotten about Uncharted 4, mm. which ended Sony's conference. Uh, they showed about 10 minutes of gameplay. That's they how ended... good the Sony press conference was. Is that I almost forgot about Uncharted 4. Like, and it went. At, it went fine without a hitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It did. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 You tune out for about a minute. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 No, no worries. You know. Uncharted 4 is fine. Yes. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. That's no, why it's been delayed. It crashed for about 30 seconds. It did, it, it did. At the beginning of the gameplay demo. At the end. So you, you're, you're going to stick with this until the, the dying end. You, you are not going to sort of give it to Xbox. So uh, uh, Xbox Conference got uh, four and a half crying dons as such. Yes. And uh, and he was quite proud of that. Um, How many shoes are you going to give it? You can make it You can give it whatever you want. Along. You can give it four and... Seven, I'll, I'll give it 4.75 shoeies about five. So there you go. So, so you, you've given it 4.75 shoeies um, to uh, beat your 4.5. I can see where this is going. Um, the question is: Is after the break, is is Jim's um, Nintendo going to hold its own with the other two big giants? <laughs> so I can't even keep that serious. Eh? <laughs> Not a chance. Oi! After the break, the House of Mario has, as it nearly always does, bucked the trend. I'm here. If there's one thing about Nintendo's approach which is truly unique these days, it's the cute, wacky and somewhat bizarre self-referential in-jokes that have come to typify the company's E3 outings in the last few years. Having abandoned the epic live stage show format so coveted by their rivals in favour of the digital weird fest that is Nintendo Direct, the House of Mario has, as it nearly always does, bucked the trend for better or for worse. And just as Sony and Microsoft start to push into high gear with their ever-maturing now not-so-new platforms, Nintendo has once again decided to do it differently. As it winds down the flawed experiment that was the Wii U, whilst preparing the ground for the NX, Nintendo's next platform. Presumably. <laughs> I say presumably as they're not letting on any fundamental information as to exactly what it is yet. For that, we'll have to wait until 2016. Well, what about details on the exciting news of Nintendo games being made available on smart devices? Nope, that'll be talked about in 2016 too. Well, surely you're going to tell us about the Nintendo theme park you teased earlier in the year then? Uh, nope. That'll be, uh, 2016, dude. Okay, okay, I get it. At least I get to see some more footage of that awesome-looking Zelda game, right? Well, funny you say that, because you'll have to wait until 20... Oh, for fuck's sake! So, what is there to talk about when you're in the middle of phasing out one not-so-successful product in favour of several you don't want anyone to know anything about yet? Well, that's right, you guessed it, you clever thing. The answer is not much. Still, not to be too unkind, there were in fact a few games to get excited about. Top of the agenda was a brand new Star Fox game. Star Fox Zero, coming to the Wii U this Christmas. Sounds good, yeah? Well, maybe. The game will rely a lot on motion controls, which isn't to everyone's taste, and I have to say, the game really doesn't look on the same level of polish or presentation of the other big in-house games from Nintendo on the Wii U. It just looks a bit empty, soulless, and ugly. The only feature that tickled my fancy was that your ship can transform into a mech that can run around for ground-level combat. A nice feature, for sure, but again, I'm pretty meh about the game at this point. Shame.
Next up, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Nintendo's peerless plumber mascot, we have a curious title that if priced and supported right, could prove to be an enjoyable distraction for Mario fans. Super Mario Maker! If you ever dreamed of making your own classic Mario levels to share with the Miiverse, this game is for you, good sir! as you'll be able to create, using a simple toolset, your own custom mashup maps based on presets of the original and beloved Mario games. There's the potential, if the toolset is right, to really get creative with the Mario universe and leave your mark on that game world. Should you have the patience and fortitude to do it, of course. Turning to another beloved Nintendo franchise, and the biggest disappointment of all the reveals was Metroid Prime Federation Force. No sooner had this 3DS multiplayer Metroid Lite game been announced, it had reduced the entire Nintendo fanbase to a heavy breathing purple nurpled rage. A franchise that sports some of the best first person shooter action as well as the greatest female protagonist in gaming history has been absent for far too long in Nintendo's premier home console lineup and will remain so, it would seem, for some more time to come. So that's it for all the main games announced by Nintendo at this year's E3. They ticked some of the major boxes for sure. Star Fox? Check. Mario? Check. Metroid? Check. But Mario Maker aside, not really in any ways that their fans really wanted. I guess this is the best Nintendo feel they can do as they delay, as do we, for 2016. Let's hope, as the ancient mystical saying goes, that good things come to those who wait. So that was my quick guide to some of the biggest games that Nintendo announced at E3. Nintendo Direct, guys, unlike the other companies, as I mentioned in the video, they don't have a big press conference. They just do kind of a weird video package and uh, they do different themes each year. Last year was kind of a uh, celebrity deathmatch theme. This year it was the Muppet theme, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, the big games, Star Fox Zero, uh, a new Star Fox game. Uh, sorry, before, before I move on, what did, what do you guys think of the Nintendo Direct? Didn't watch it. Uh, <laughs> what? I like. I don't even know. Are they still a company? Awkward. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it called Nintendo what? <laughs> Nintendo. <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> when I was a lad. I, <laughs> when I was a child, I played the original <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo what system? Entertainment. <laughs> So, so Nintendo, the NES. They're, they're still the going, NES. are they? Ring, ring any bell. That's the Super Nintendo. That's the next one. God, I don't know. Trying to educate the youth here. Ridiculous. So Nintendo, they they, they had the one just after the Sega conference, did they? Oh, <laughs> snap. <laughs> wow. That's what I did. Wow. Uh, so, no, no, I must admit, I, I, this is terrible to admit, but I, I, I didn't see it either. I just, you didn't I, see it? If I'd known it was about the Muppets, I might have actually seen it. Dude, I, I like a bit help of me out here. Did you see it? Uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I was too wow. on I, your own. On your I own. Do, I do actually. I've got a Nintendo know. Wii U. I should have watched it because I, you know, yeah. I want more games for that console. For all you know, it could have been the greatest thing ever in the history of everything. Did and the question is, was yeah. it the greatest? I heard thing it was in the history of everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then Nintendo. The no. Uh, no, no. To be fair, there were a few interesting games announced. Why I'm even asking, Brad, have you heard of Star Fox? Yeah. Okay, there was a new Star Fox game. Star Fox is a Star Fox Zero. I must yeah. admit, I, I, even though I didn't see the whole of the Nintendo conference, I did see the Star Fox trailer. And, um, oh, right, yeah. Having played the original Star Fox and being a massive fan of Nintendo back in the day and play, had, had, I had a NES and I played the SNES and, yeah. and all these things lots, um, I was fairly underwhelmed. I just, it, it looks okay. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's something that doesn't particularly look like no, it should be on a next gen console. And it's just trying to get a little bit of name recognition, but it is. I'm not sitting there going, wow, Star Fox. I can see know. Nintendo Boring. going the way of just going mobile very soon. Well, of course, that, that was the other big thing they did announce earlier in the year, but they didn't elaborate on either here, yeah. was, of course, Nintendo games being available mobile. They're saying that it's kind of to promote their other stuff, but people have been calling for it for years to be able They're to not Mario do They don't mobile. need to do that. They, you know, yeah. Look how many people have 3DSs. And... Well, this is it, but they are, they are going to do it. They are going to... They haven't announced how it's going to work exactly or what the games are going to be. I, I think they've only got a couple more generations of consoles before they, they go the way of Sega and they just become about yeah. their IP and they, they make the game. Yeah, so Star Fox was, uh, was a bit disappointing, but Super Mario Maker looked interesting because that's basically a, a basic tool set that lets you use a preset of any of the original Mario games to make custom levels and you can upload them to... Nintendo network and people can beat that's them. Pretty, and that's just quite, quite cool. going to end up cool. with you know, the whole Mario Brothers collection. 
just yeah. made by the community. Exactly. So you can create all your custom levels and you, you pick each preset of each game and it gives you the graphic set for that game. That's pretty cool. And the rules. Uh, there are a few things like you do have to actually have beaten your own level before mm. you can upload it though, just to make sure that you can't create an impossible level. Because that'd be too well, You're not going to have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing where we have a oh, chasm that's too big to too jump. Too big to jump across, <laughs> exactly. But this, I mean, what's great about this is, it is it's, it's inviting the community to come up with these amazing levels. So, I don't like games like that. It's lazy. <laughs> Lazy. Build a fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the don't guys... go sit on the fence, Brad. Yeah, so like, like, build a game. Don't let other people do it for you. Yeah, but Christ. that way they don't have to do any of the work. It's clever, it's, isn't exactly. Remember the one Nintendo's going out of business? <laughs> yeah. They ran out of games. ideas to let someone Wait, else. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> in fairness, I, I can see his point. It is lazy. Whereas you know, people like Sony are saying, you know, we'll build a game. But we kickstart it so you can pay for have it. You ever met, <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you. I bet yes. you that someone recreates. Met who's never made a game before, trying to make a level. Yeah. Why? Yeah, they are always. They're, they're always quite difficult to use, though. There was more difficult well, the, than you're the, thinking. The, the tool set does look quite simple, but then again, <laughs> yeah, look how popular things like Minecraft are. You know, mm. cre making creations of tool sets. New Animal Crossing games. Whoa. You guys love those games. Wow, oh, man. But because you, I'm a 12 year old girl, I'm so excited. But people were upset about that, you see, because they weren't proper Animal Crossing games. They were kind of like mini games with the Animal Crossing skin on top. Is it just like a set of tools when people have to make the actual Animal Crossing? It's <laughs> funny you say that, actually. Is it actually? The, so this is disgusting. The Wii U so, one's kind of make your own board game. So it's a game with the Animal Crossing skin. So they've yes. skinned the animals from Animal Crossing they have, and put the skin on top of someone else. I, I want to fight for digital animals. Our kids are going to be traumatized. This yeah. is disgusting. Yeah, it, it, it's, quite, it's quite a heck. How many are going to be Amiibos crazy? got announced? Oh, loads, I'm sure. Oh. Loads. Uh, as you know, I'm a great collector of Amiibos. Yeah. Um, Adam, you've got a few Amiibos, haven't you, mate? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. On, <laughs> on your own, Jim. On your own. <laughs> so, that's Nintendo. In terms of my rating for their conference, it, yeah, last year's last year they probably won E3, but in all seriousness. But this year, nah, I've got to give them three earwatters. But moving on to the best of the rest, and I just made a quick list of some of the other games that were shown at the other conferences, non-Sony and Microsoft, that are worth mentioning. There was a teaser trailer for a new Mass Effect game. Uh, of course, another massive game that I'm really excited about, Doom 4. Guys, Amazing. Doom 4, awesome. And you know, none of the survival horror crap they did in Doom 3. This is going back to the roots, proper roots of Doom. Um, the whole kind of, you know, cool rocking soundtrack, running through corridors quickly, lots and lots of enemies attacking all the time. Yeah. So yeah, the, the last thing I think worth mentioning, um, big game series coming back, Guitar Hero and Rock Band coming back at the same time. Isn't that crazy? The last Guitar Hero and Rock Bands were about five um, years ago. This is like 2010 all over again. It is. It is. Like this back, back to, to the future. When well, it comes this, to this is great because we, we, we've this played a game. lot of this. We used to have uh, our own little rock band. For me, those are my picks of the best of the rest from the other conferences. So, they're pretty good stuff there, actually. Yeah, so, some good, good, stuff stuff good stuff in the nice best stuff. of the rest. Um, Nintendo, a little bit disappointing. But I yeah. like this. I like the fact that we bring it down, get a little bit depressed before we bring, come up with the, the very best after the break. Says you. Indeed. Still to come. Ooh. We have some sort of weird new sort of VR headsets here. The um, yeah, it's so real. Welcome, viewers. You are here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you have felt it your entire life. You know indubitably that the future is upon us. The talk, of course, of virtual reality. Do you want to know what it is? You must follow me down the rabbit hole, which will see just how deep it goes. If you take the green pill, you will awake a line to the Oculus Rift and the world of the Xbox. Or maybe you should take the blue pill to realize the wonders of Project Morpheus. Then there's another green pill, well, or lime really, for the HTC Vive. And the uh, orange pill is for Samsung Gear VR for, well, no particular reason. Also a yellow pill for Microsoft HoloLens. We made the uh, red pill for Avagant Glyph. Well, just, I don't know, because uh, Google Cardboard doesn't even get a pill. No way. Yes way. So, oh wait, sorry. Whose idea was this? I mean, it's just, this is a segment about the future. Why are we doing a Matrix pastiche? The film came out in like 1999. Just do it! Shut it, LaBeouf. Whoa. I don't think I'm doing very well. I've mastered the whole green is good, red is bad thing. I was the moral victim. 
So we've just had a go on the uh, Radial G uh, again. We had a go on the first series of the show, but we've just had a go on the uh, Oculus uh, Developer Kit 2. But this is just one of a plethora of uh, different VR things that are available. And you seem to be the man to know because you have all of them. You, you yes, we do have all of them, pretty all much. All the VR. Uh, there's, I think, two missing from the collection, but they've only just been announced. So, oh, well, there uh, you go. So what one could uh, excuse you for not yeah, having those yet. Yeah. So, so we had a go on the Oculus 2, which is the second one in there. The Oculus mm -hmm. 1 Developer Kit being very envelope and quite flat and right head butted wall where's the second old one? In, and, uh, and old two years space. old now so yes uh, yeah. so so how does the oculus 2 uh differ from the oculus one uh well the dev kit one um that was the first one that was what people got from the kickstarter uh that's 720p and runs about 60 hertz it's good um but a lot of people felt a little bit queasy on using it um and it had a lot of screen door effect where you can see the the, the spaces between the pixels and there's no positional tracking, so you could lean left and right and look up and down, but you couldn't lean uh, forwards and backwards. Right. So the DK2 then became 1080p um, across both eyes, uh, 75 hertz um, uh, refresh rate, um, and then it also added the camera. So the camera then tracks where the position of the headset is. So you, if you're standing on a balcony, you can then actually look down and over as opposed to looking over and your view doesn't change. So I can imagine these these are all going to be very much vertigo inducing, all of these. There's going to be lots of people who are not going to get on with these. Are going to, well, going so, to... well <laughs> there will be people who will struggle with it. Um, we've demoed to over 4,000 people now and we're still tracking uh, under 1% in terms of uh, people feeling a bit queasy. Uh, there's kind of a 20 seconds um, make it or break it hump that we find people <laughs> have to get over. Um, I've never seen anybody projectile vomit yet. Um, at EGX, one girl did come back with different coloured kind of leggings, I'm sure. She said she didn't feel very well, but um, no, no known vomits yet. Come on, baby. I just think how far behind you I am, Jim. So, you obviously you've got the Oculus, I can also see up on the top shelf there the Project Morpheus. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, how, how do they differ? Are they very much the same thing in different shells? Do you have a, I know it's very, very tricky to ask, you've, you've got to be impartial, but do you have a favourite? Is, is there one that sticks out to you? Uh, we have just got the Vive, so that's currently my favourite. But in terms of all the headsets that we have, that is the highest spec that we have available personally to us at the moment. Um, the Morpheus is it's going to be 1080p across both eyes, so it'll be lower resolution than the commercial Vive and Oculus, uh, but it runs at 120 hertz. So. Uh, it's trade-offs in terms of... So it's all swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Obviously all of these are the developer kit versions at the moment, so yeah. none of these are the commercial release ones. Do you no. think there's going to be a massive change between, say, like the Ocu Oculus developer kit 2 and the final version, or the Morpheus and the final version? Uh, well, we've seen the pictures and we've seen uh, the footage from E3 of the actual commercial edition of the Oculus, so we know what it looks like. Um, it looks completely different to the DK2 that, that you've been using today. Um, it, it looks quite similar-ish to the present bay, which um, uh, uh, people have seen photos of. But it's a lot smoother, it's a lot sleeker, and um, it's a lot lighter. Um, I've tried the present bay, and after the DK2, it's kind of a bit heavy and clunky, but um, the present bay is just so much lighter. It's about a third of the weight, probably. Oh, no. Uh, the problem with VR is that you can't really describe it to someone. You've, you've got to try it. Uh, so I can, I, I can understand from a certain point with Sony's keynote where they didn't have so much Morpheus time because if you're showing off a 2D video then people aren't going to understand what the difference between that 2D video and the other games that don't support Morpheus. So half of the booth apparently is all dedicated to Morpheus so you can have to go and try it out for yourself. Uh, but we've always found, well, 99% of the people who've played Radio G um, at various events it's either their first time in VR or they've got some smaller prior experience, but they're, they're converted to VR straight away. Even if they're the biggest naysayers and aren't particularly interested, once you've actually got a headset on somebody's face and they've tried it out and they understand it, then that's it. They're converted and they don't want to go back to just playing on a monitor. Well, I can say, having played this for a second time now, I am definitely one of these people. I'm a convert and you should be too. So of course we've saved the best to last. We are talking about the future. It is here now. Right here now, it is of course VR 
Um, which I you can see, see all the colors. Oh, so we have some sort of weird new sort of VR headsets here. The um, no it's so can real, hear me speak. Greg. It's I cool. can feel the wind on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it, god! It is real. It is real. Oh, What's really amazing oh, is uh, <laughs> oh, oh. 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 what the hell are you trying to do to each other? Then? It, it's real. If, put, put your headset back on. Oh, it's, it's like 4D because it, it actually feels. <laughs> 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 Hey, oh, the future is now. The future is now. <laughs> and it tickles. actually feels like there was a nipple cripple there. It's amazing. So, uh, so VR. <laughs> VR, it, as you saw from the thing, I had a very serious uh, thing yeah. there. Um, but uh, but we, we were talking, uh, we had uh, Sam from Radio G talking about all the different headsets. And uh, I'm glad someone did because I, I have a feeling. Oh, oh, no, you, you put your head in them. Not oh, round them. <laughs> they go round your head. Yeah, that's why I'm going wrong. I, I, um, I had the headset back here, sort of thing. And but I'm kind of glad. Band across my eyes. I felt obliged to do a video package. <laughs> Cave simulator. <laughs> Blind simulates. I oh. felt obliged to do a, a video package explaining <laughs> some of these things, just because um, I got a feeling that neither Sony or. Xbox really did, and Nintendo. Well, they didn't show them in the press conferences because you can't really show it, can you? But it's but it's they not, did have some yeah, games on show. At the, well, on the stage I, I'm going to generally show. say, from my opinion, so having seen all this, I I think that Xbox, you know, they they committed to it. They said they said yes, we've got the Morpheus. We're also kind of uh, yeah, pairing up with the Vive. Sorry, the uh, the, the, oh, the yes. Oculus Rift. Yeah. They're also pairing up with sort of like um, HTC Vive and yeah. doing a sort of they're not being just exclusive for the one. Mm. They also they they brought out the uh, the, the Hololens, which was was. You know, and it was a huge moment there. Um, Sony, yeah, not so much. They kind of went, oh, I've got the Morpheus. It was about two minutes they worth of stuff. Out and then Girlfriend kind of. Simulator 2015. We're like <laughs> yeah. some beach house with some bird. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's going to be pretty let, let, Let's just get, let, just get this out of the way now. As of all technology, the way it works, okay, is this is going to be fantastic for games, but eventually it's all going to be about the porn. Of course. There's, there's, they're already doing Girlfriend Simulator. You yeah. know that eventually. Got this, Farming Simulator, you'll have Plowing Simulator. Well, hey! I know, I know so the question is, do we think VR is here to stay? Do we think this is no. the future? We've got Adam, a resounding Adam, no Adam, from Adam, over here. Okay, so let's have a vote. Adam? No. Greg? I, I think partially. I think it's making a step in the right direction. We've got a way to go yet. No. It's, <laughs> way, it's like way no. too expensive for any normal yeah. person. Fair enough. I, I think uh, augmented stroke virtual reality will be a part of gaming, big part of gaming in, in the future, but just not in the immediate future. Not quite yet. So there you go, yeah. VR, the future still is gonna be in the future, unfortunately. Absolutely. But, uh, well, at this but, point, maybe we should have a vote on who we thought won all the conferences as well. I feel what Xbox took the biscuit. It's Xbox? Sony. Wow, <laughs> who would have guessed that right? <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo, no. Uh, You're basically, you know. Dude, go on. Xbox. Oh! You could have at least said Bethesda. So, <laughs> so if I vote Sony, we're going to have a tie. We're going to have some sort of tie situation, are we? Yeah, yeah, we would. Ready? Yeah. Xbox. Oh, oh, hey! It was. It blatantly was. It really was. Um, na 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 <laughs> na, 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 na. They need. They need something. This is all they can. This is all they can get. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I think I think what was missing basically is is VR is almost there, and and the idea that you can have this 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 headset on and you can touch things and you can feel almost like you're in a real world and tactile. It's so close, but do you know what it would be even better? If rather than just feeling like you can touch things and you had this immersive set on, you could just remove this and play with real things you can touch, like, most importantly, board games. So this is what was missing for me, Free, and uh, yeah, I, feel, uh, I feel obliged to point this out. It's all about the board games. It definitely should have been that. It was what was missing. <laughs> <laughs>